potatoes in the pot. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Do I get it because it's like let's do, do it, it, but it's do also it. like, like let's it. make let's stew. It. Yes. Yeah. Food. Welcome to Steamboat <laughs> Comedy Podcast, everybody. Tommy Pickles' dad, stew it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> And we got the obscure Rugrats references starting hey. off the show. <laughs> Call me Reptar because y'all green with envy for not thinking of that. You know what I mean? Roll Tide. <laughs> <laughs> get, in, get in that microphone. Uh, I am Kyle Ruff with you again today. After all those silly... <laughs> Girls did the last podcast. <laughs> there will be cut. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. God, it's everywhere. Today, us four gentlemen, let's go around. Actually, I forgot to introduce you. In front of me is Jared Morrill. Say hello. What's up? To my left is Miles Sanchez. Hey, hey, hey. And to my diagonal is my best good friend coming in, joining us for the first time. Mr. Reed Belmonte, say hello. Hello, hello. There he is. So, uh, yeah, Reed's uh, new on the Steamboat comedy scene. He's been prepping for a while because I've been forcing him to via text. I've been working on my NPR voice for a while, Kyle. Uh, it's You need more work. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> it's more PBS more than anything. <laughs> Let's be honest. Like, sound like Bob Ross had an abortion. That's really what that sounds like. Oh, thank you. Wait, uh, like like the actual aborted fetus itself? Like the sounds it makes? No, or the sound no. of the procedure of the abortion? No, like he wanted oh, to paint a really good picture, but he didn't, so he threw it away. Uh, an aborted painting. Yeah. <laughs> there was yeah, no that, happy little tree there. Say, that tree wasn't so happy. It was pretty depressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of depression... The theme of this podcast is the seasonal life. Woo! Woo! The golden years. Yes. Golden years. So we decided, the four of us, we've all tried our hand quite a bit in what's called seasonal work. So as you know, this is the Steamboat Comedy Podcast, and a large part of Steamboat Springs, Colorado, is the ski industry. And as you may also guess, uh, there's not a lot of skiing in the seasons other than winter. So, last time I checked, yes. Yes. We, for those who have never worked these kind of jobs, all of us here uh, have been working for a long time in this seasonal industry where we work in places that are only open in certain parts of the year. And other parts of the year, there's either nothing going on at all or kind of the whole industry changes and everything in between. So, we kind of we thought we'd, uh, it could be a fun topic of conversation to talk about our experiences in this industry and kind of what that's been like so we myself and reed and jared we all met doing this seasonal work in a place called glacier national park mm-hmm. terrible place don't ever go there yeah gross it's so ugly it's so disgust- <laughs> all the giant rocks come out of the ground yeah you know T- to yeah. be fair, that's actually what I threaten every single job with here is like, fuck you, dudes. You don't think I'll do it? I'll go to fucking Glacier right now. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it, dude. I'll do it. I'll fucking do it. You don't think I'll do it? And they believe you because we've been recruiting people from here to Glacier. I know, and it works decades. every fucking time. I'm like, guys, he's going to go. It's a crazy thing here specifically. There's a weird pipeline between Glacier and and it's literally a key phrase I've learned living in Steamboat, not knowing what the fuck Glacier actually. I don't I don't I've never been never been. But I know I, I could say the word Glacier and someone's going to be like, all right. He yeah. Knows. Someone pops out of the woodwork and just like, oh, I work there. Hey, 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 yeah. Are we on you say there? Glacier? And I'm like, yeah, but I was literally talking about a humongous piece of ice in the middle of the water. Not <laughs> <laughs> you mean, not you mean Montana. No, <laughs> no, I was not talking about that glacier. I was literally, yeah. It's like also, that's that's an iceberg you're referring to now. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's actually a large sheet of ice, which is moving. But yeah, we met in a place called Glacier National Park, and Glacier, a lot of people get into the seasonal gig by going to national parks, which is how we started doing it. It's It was kind of obscure. I didn't even know where Glacier was until I went there. But it's awesome. It's in, like, northwest Montana. So it's only open in the summer and for a pretty short amount of time. So you can work there, and it's awesome. But obviously in the winter... It's there's, desolate. Is There's nothing. There's not, like, ski resorts there or anything in northwest barren Montana. Well, there's whitefish, but... 
that's yeah. that's on a tame on side, side where the park it's a yeah that's different. the tame side whereas where we worked is like literally nothing you you can't do shit right so it all it all shuts down so you got to find somewhere else to work that's how i got into this place was from there they're like hey we've got jobs in, in, in a ski resort in steamboat springs colorado and then you can go back and forth it's like okay and so we did that i did that for five years where i would work in the summer there, the winter here, and then not work at all in the spring and fall, mm-hmm. which is pretty sweet. Known as mud thing. season. Yeah, mud season. A.K.A. go to Utah and have a blast in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. Eat acid in the desert. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go explore your radio mines at one in the morning, <laughs> choke bags of wine. Exactly. There was a brief time in the middle of my seasonal run last five years where I tried to go back to civilization, and I hated it. I was like, wait, you guys just like work at this job like forever? Like when does it end? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh, you just come back here for ten years. Yeah. Like you just Ooh. do this every day for all twelve months of the year? Yeah, it's like that sucks. Um I, I wanna get it out there. Like, where have you worked fully, Kyle? I so like, I well list? before I got into the seasonal thing, after college I lived in Cincinnati for a couple of years and then it was actually Reed who got me into the seasonal life in Montana. He was like, hey, I'm doing this thing. You should check it out. And I was like, okay. I don't know what the fuck you're doing in Ohio right now, but you need to get the fuck out here and check this that shit out. That's more or less it, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. I don't care. Yeah, Best Buy's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was doing. My college, my college degree got me a job at Best Buy. And so- What's uh, your college degree in real quick? It's in media production and new technology. Yeah, Best Buy. <laughs> Best Buy. Yeah, right? You can work for minimum wage selling TVs. By the way, means. Kyle, this mic setup, dude. Oh, Fantastic. Yeah. You see all this new technology <laughs> around you? Yeah. Got a degree. See so yeah, how we're Thank producing God, this media? Dude. I mean, yeah, for real. Like, if we were the Avengers, you, sh- you might be the technology guy. Like, oh, you, don't you, you would be all of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> all right. I thought you were going to say Tony Stark. And no, you're just like the just technology sh- guy. No, no. <laughs> It's You're Tony Fox. You be shield. Agent Coulson. Yeah. You watch your fucking mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you totally would be Coulson, dude. You'd be Coulson. Coulson is so oh, useless. God. Useless. Yep. <sighs> you be the Col- only thing he does productive is die. <laughs> <laughs> and give intense dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. And keep my trading card in his locker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Because no one else we, wants it? We yeah. all feel bad now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Coulson died. I guess yeah. we all have to fight on the same team. Yep, pretty much. Uh, Fucking so, fuck that. Uh, but no, I I did that, and then uh, I took a brief break in the middle. Me and the lady, she went to school, and so I was like, oh, I'm gonna go back to real life and live with her. And I moved to Ann Arbor, and uh, all my hair fell out because I hated it so much. <laughs> <laughs> and so I so oh, I came back. <laughs> yeah, but no, it was really it was weird. I was like, I can't just have a job where it just goes on. Forever. Yeah, fuck that. It's it's kind of strange now, and that's one of the things we we're going to talk about is like the pros and cons of this industry. Is it's it's kind of a pro and a con where it's like you sign up for a job that has definitive end date, and so people get kind of like senioritis towards the end of like sure. a winter or the, a the summer. light at the end of the rainbow. Like, yeah, you know like, it's coming. Like, I want to get yeah. the fuck out of here. Like this is almost done. Where in the real world, it's like, well, we have Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. That's, oh, then you mean that day that I work? That's yeah. just what you do. Right. That's exactly. The, that's the most awkwardest thing to have to tell my friends back home, which I figured they'd get, but they don't. Like, they're like, "Are you coming over Thanksgiving or Christmas?" I'm like, "Do you know what blackout dates are? Like, do you know? Like, right? No. Like, I'm not coming. That that's that's my prime money making like yeah. Time. That's that's the time. That's, that's the when time. I'm making dough. That's when I'm making money. That's when I'm gonna work no. sixty hours a week. That's where I'm about to <laughs> want to hate myself. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm yeah. gonna love hating myself during that time. Oh like, yeah, and it's I've missed so many like weddings and things like that because there's just prime times in the summer and winter. Like I had, I had a buddy of mine who's like, hey, I want you to be in my wedding, and I was like, hell yeah, dude. He's like, we're doing it on New Year's Eve. And I was like, there's a nope. 0% chance I can go to that. Yeah. Yep. Can't do it. Like, a lot of people don't think about it for a vacation, but there is a tremendous amount of people who go on vacation on, like, Christmas Day. Yeah. You know? Yeah, spend Christmas somewhere else. Yeah. That's like when I was a kid, I, would, I wouldn't even have Thanksgiving at my house. We'd go to a fucking hotel with a buffet. <laughs> like, That's awesome. that was vacation for us. Yeah, no, I actually remember eating uh, Thanksgiving at a Cracker Barrel one time and it being the yeah. not worst Thanksgiving of my life. I love crackers and barrels. 
It's a it's just the big trade off that we have with our our line of work. I mean, what people work really really hard for for years to go do for ten days, usually just a weekend, we do all the time. Yeah, that's our life. To our disposal. So when yeah. people are like, "What are you doing for Christmas?" It's like I'm working, but I did get a hundred days on a ski mountain this season. Didn't pay a dime. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's just a vi- it, it work and seasonal work. It's just about finding your definition of what it means to be rich is as hippie as that sounds sure but it but it is the truth the two biggest industries for these seasonal works probably are ski resorts and national parks and cruises cruises and cruises cruises. cruises. definitely cruises i always forget that's kind of a sect of it because i've I don't. None of us have ever done that. Because I after actually, working in a national park, we're like, "Fuck that!" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not working on a goddamn boat. I, I actually <laughs> found out about like a cruise ship based out of Boston that yeah. I thought about like fucking working for that just takes you pra- like all around like the rich harbors of Boston. There, there's definitely that sect of season. Yeah. Work. Well, that that being said, like I would love to maybe even work in like a cruise ship that goes through like Alaska without actually having to work in Alaska. Like that sounds dope. Like I hear you can make. You make a major bank in Alaska, but that's a season that you work in Alaska where you're like you're just working and you're dead. Yeah, and like for sure, you don't enjoy the like Alaskan thing that you think you're gonna enjoy. Oh sure, you know? there's you definitely take it for granted. I've woken up on days where I've worked for like 13 days straight, and it's a powder day. It's like Reed, do you want to go skiing? It's just like I really don't. feel feel like it yeah, <laughs> like no, that, damn it no, yeah. i know it's terrible that's to say but I just, i'm just like that, fuck it i want to sit it, home and do nothing that's like, what made it bad for me like i i don't know how to like ski or snowboard and like i only have the one experience of trying to snowboard where no there's that. definitely a lot of that like we uh during the holidays and stuff there's such high traffic i work almost double the hours for a couple straight weeks big time yeah, which yeah. is pretty crazy. Right. But well, it's, a, it's a huge trade off for I like, kind of wanted to get do. like pros and cons for people who don't understand this. Well, kind we, of we've, we've been we've been shitting on it pretty hard here. We can give some pros. I mean, we live in some of the most beautiful goddamn places. That's like, true. Not just in the U.S., but on a world spectrum, dude. Yeah. Like we're fucking spoiled. Pretty much the, the whole thing with seasonal spots is is they're generally all vacation areas mm-hmm. and. The whole point of a vacation area is it's a place where people want to go. Right. Like I mean, like you, Jared, and Miles both worked at like beach type places in yeah. the summer that were seasonal, and yeah. that's a way different ball game than national parks or ski resorts. Oh, way different. I used to do what I called was a staycation, which I had friends <laughs> that they had uh, they had different kind of seasons. Like I guess at the beach they have. The winter season, which is like the equivalent of a Colorado mud season. The winter season yes. lasts from probably about mm, December to probably about like February. Yeah. That's the winter for, for like a lower Alabama culture where I'm from. Yeah, it was, it was right. a little different where I was. So, yeah. so that being said, from like March through, I guess, April is your spring. And then you had spring break. Yeah. So everyone's running down the beach to spring break. What I used to do is I, I used to re- I have regular white-collar jobs or sales jobs or whatever, but I would take the weekend off, go cook at the beach, stay with my friends that like made a living at the beach that were just like restaurant employees, go work at their restaurant, like have a weekend at the beach where like I go work a morning shift, get off, go spend a day at the beach or, you know, vice versa, you know work a night shift but go to the morning at the beach or whatever and just get drunk and you know kind of just do the working beach lifestyle man it was great and then to just kind of take that and then like move it to like the mountains was just completely like a whole different lifestyle man well so it's funny because we come from like opposite sides of that because i started in the mountains with seasonal work yeah and like i grew up on the beach but I don't like the beach. I like the mountains. Once I moved out here, I was like, oh, this is amazing. I want to be here all the time. Mm-hmm. And then more or less out of necessity, I moved to the beach where my dad was. And I was like, dude, I was a towel boy. Literally, my job was to fold towels. It was the worst thing in the world. <laughs> dude. I literally, I peeled out a month early. I looked at my dad. I was like, I'm leaving. My dad let me stay at his place rent free, which was awesome. Thanks, dad. I know you're listening. Yeah, Don. Yeah. He, yeah. Don Morrill <laughs> in the house. Yeah, but I just like I was done with that place so quick. I was like, I don't like the heat. 
I don't want to be here. I don't like the ocean. I don't like sand in my ass constantly. I was like, I'm going back to the mountains. I'm piecing out the steamboat a month a month early. I want to be know, dude. near Th- snow. There's something about getting drunk on a beach and like swimming in like the I, I swam in like the fresh Gulf water, dude. And it sucks too. Like you said, it's hot. Like I used to sling. I, I have PTSD about slinging pizza pies <laughs> like on a beach. Does the P stand for pizza? <laughs> It's dude, bad. dude, you, I, you and me both, brother. I, I did fish fries next to a pizza lake, man. Yeah. 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 I, I've, I, I've slung pizza out at, like on the beaches of Gulf Shores, like in the middle of spring break. I did a, I did a spring break into Hangout Fest. I, I don't know if y'all know what Hangout Fest is, but it's a big festival down at the beach in Lower Free Alabama. Hangout. And uh, yeah, I, it, it was rough. Like I remember, like it was great because it rained one season and. I got cut from work and I got my like shift pie. I took my shift pie <laughs> and I traded it for wristbands. And I saw Mumford and Sons and I hate Mumford and Sons, guys. I hate <laughs> Mumford and Sons, but I saw them for free. I mean, and I did that because I was like, whatever. Like I was hanging out with a homegirl. Shout out to Erica Casada. She she fucking loves Mumford and what Sons. What up, girl? And so she was upset. like, let's go see Mumford. And I was like, I don't even want to see Mumford. She's like, there's free flip-flops on the beach if you go, Miles. Yeah, <laughs> so, there are other peoples that you can steal. Yeah, that that's what we like, did. Yeah. I drunk people. I, I, got, I got some really nice Tebas, dude. They were just sitting on the beach. They could have been somebody's, but they Fair left enough. them there. Well, well, so, now they're so there you go. Pro. Pro. Free sandals. Free <laughs> sandals. <laughs> Con. Mumford and Sons. <laughs> <laughs> Pro. Only went because it was free. I mean, but that's the thing, too, dude. I saw so many shitty bands this year working the outside fucking grill at Timber and Torch. Like, so many shitty s- <laughs> reggae bands, so many shitty bluegrass bands. Yeah. Like, some pe- I probably saw Billy Strings and wouldn't be able to tell you. You probably did. I probably did. Yeah. Be well, brought- that's that's the thing about Steamboat. So, we, we it, one thing that's a, a pro about uh, the ski resort here is they have a stage right at the base of the mountain, mm-hmm. and they have concerts there all the time. Free concerts. Con is this town only likes... Shitty bluegrass. Shitty bluegrass and reggae. And that's Which, it. Although, I will admit, I did like when the Whalers came uh, a couple well, of years ago. Well, the Whalers come every year. They're that pretty was really cool. cool. I yeah. got off somehow, miraculously. They're like, Miles paid his dues, gave him the last day of the season off. Like yeah, they're that's... trying to be a little too Colorado. Uh, well, it's, yeah. like, it's like one thing I like. <laughs> but you I... know what I did? I did the most stereotypical thing. I, like, partied. In the middle of like the fucking crowd, I saw boobies. Like a buddy passed me a joint, and I saw the whalers, dude. I had a college experience I didn't know I needed. But I, got <laughs> I got it. I got Did it. You go to college, I, man? No, no I didn't saw the whalers, I, bro. No, I saw, I saw the whalers. <laughs> like I graduated culinary school, I cooked, and then I saw the whalers. Like I got my PhD in Bob Marley's old. No, dude, no, oh se- my God. no, seriously, I feel bad. There was a young kid, me and him. Like he went to culinary school before me, at the same culinary school, and he did his externship in Disney World, right? He had externship? Mi- externship. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a paid internship, you know, where they're like, oh, you, you're kind of. You mean a job? <laughs> right? He did his externship in Disney World, and I'm like, I'm doing mine in Steamboat, and he left Disney World. I stayed in Steamboat. You know, I forgot. That's another thing. That, uh, another seasonal job thing is. Uh, amusement parks. Amusement parks, yeah. Mm. My uh, stepbrother and sister. I hear, I hear they get down at Disney. I hear well, they, they worked do. at Cedar Point, and I oh always shit got weird no, at Cedar Point. I've too. heard, yeah. I've heard fucking horror stories about Cedar Point. Yeah, like oh, barbed wire, just barbed wire on the inside of the fence at the dormitories where they live. Like they want to keep you there. You just want to go on rides and eat popcorn. It's like, well, I want to go out in, into the city. No, you'll stay here. <laughs> yeah. No, you will never leave. We have your Cedar Point. Here. Your dream yes. has come true. It's like let me out. It please. is on an <laughs> island. <laughs> like literally, Cedar Point is an island. That's fucking. So it's like, oh, you want to go home? The, Swim. The, the Isle the of shark Ohio. In, the shark infested waters of Lake Erie. <laughs> <laughs> The oil well, infested right. waters of Lake Erie. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you really want to go swimming or you want to go yeah. and get the Malayan Force again? Yeah. <laughs> there are ill tempered sea bass, I believe. In. They are ill tempered? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Um, really quick, though, just because Kyle said, or, uh, sorry, because Miles said a college experience. Like, for me, it's funny because St. Mary, where we 
for the listeners where we all worked up in Montana. Oh, that's east side of Glacier National Park. Yeah, anyone ever goes to visit that? Yes. That was my college experience. All right, because I started when I was eighteen. Oh yeah. So like a big pro for me is like I didn't actually pay to go to college. Oh, neither I literally did, neither just neither did I. Well, no, but like I, my my point being is I didn't go to a college. I got like a degree in life when I went to. Granted, oh, it was dude. adult summer camp, but like I learned so much more. Who's the Who's the director who did Dazed and Confused and the other one? Uh, uh, Linklater. Yeah, Linklater. Yeah, Linklater. Linklater needs to make a movie about Saint Mary. Well, that's or what we uh, we've had or the we idea for a while, but way to put it on the fucking podcast. So now Brian Glazer's going to pick it up. Way to go, Kyle. Oh, uh, we can. No one make a <laughs> seasonal <laughs> movie. It's ours. I, patent no, pending. I, I, patent I actually, pending. like when I talk about like the yeah. benefits of working seasonal work i cite jared when i talk to friends and family and be like i know this kid who didn't go to college and he just came as this i love you jared this piece of shit and he oh, came out to <laughs> <laughs> this cocky he was bro. just a boy he was just a little baby and he came out to glacier and man you fast forward four years you're debt free you, you have management, management experience on your resume, yeah you own your own car yeah. like God damn it. It's either that or you, 60 you grand what, in debt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You could do whatever you want. Like, I, I value the education in, that I had in Northern Michigan going to college, cause of, especially because I met Andy and I met you, obviously, sure. and everything. And But uh, at the end of the day, like, if somebody came up to me in my high school, said, you know, with a beard and a plaid shirt, Look like he just got done canoeing or something. He's just like, y'all ever heard of Montana? You know, you could just do that for a summer and then just oh, keep God. going off. I'd be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like that was never introduced. I still to am. Me, I'm ever. still like, am paying see- for college, and I hate it. And I could have gone to St. Mary and had a much better time and got real tangible experience. Like I do have a degree in media production, but I could be producing all this media from three YouTube videos. Yeah. Because that's what I did well, so <laughs> after I graduated. That's why I give my brother so much props because he went and worked uh, in the summer of 13, which is right when I graduated. So I was just sitting on my ass. I did nothing for like 10 months. Like legit did nothing. I was just like in a horrible space in my life. How many jobs did you have before you actually came to Glacier? One. I worked at a grocery store for three months when I was 16. I Literally, I made <laughs> wow. I made 150 bucks a paycheck because I worked like three shifts a week that were like four hours. I literally used that money to buy weed, weed so I could yeah. smoke for the week. <laughs> It'll be and that God. Was it. no, and then in started, a week, my ass. It'll no. be God in 48 I, hours. Well, no, and then I started <laughs> selling weed. Short week. Then I started selling weed just so I could fucking make it. And I didn't need a job because all I cared about was smoking weed in high school. And that's my point. Hey. All I did was sit <laughs> Smoke weed every day. <laughs> All I did was sit on my couch and smoke weed and wait for my friends to come home so we could drink and smoke. And then I would do nothing. I played video. We, we I think I beat Lego Star Wars like 17 times in one winter. Woo! And then my brother is like, you're an idiot. You're not doing anything. He's like, you're going to apply for Glacier whether you want to or not. I went, okay. And it was the greatest decision of my life. Now I'm here. Yeah, you're right. He was probably like, Jared, if you go to Glacier, you're going to get some poon. And you were like, yeah. no, you know what? And really then you <laughs> went to the middle of nowhere, Montana. You're like, whoa. No, you know what dude he really told me? Dude, castle. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. all the dudes. This is what Jesse it's really like a told small me. Small Alaska. <laughs> Jesse looks at me a month before we go. He goes, by the way, you're gonna get drug tested. And I was like, what? What do you mean I'm gonna get drug? I smoke a lot of drugs. I was like, I'm gonna get drug tested. You had to and then work I your retail job. No, and then I and then I show up <laughs> and I uh, like the first person I asked, I think it was Clay, and I was like. Yeah, so like, when do they start handing out drug tests? He goes, drug tests? What are you talking about? He's like, Our, my brother said we get drug tests. He goes, no, everyone smokes here. Yeah. Tell him to shut up and go smoke a joint. I was like, okay. If they had <laughs> drug tests yeah. for seasonal That's workers, one. no one would ever go skiing. Yeah, I mean, resorts <laughs> would, would be, be shutting no down. Seasonal work. Yes. Nothing. Like, remember- what glacier? <laughs> <laughs> My mom, uh, she used to work for this uh, nursing home. Uh, they were, like, having a hard time keeping, like, employees working in their food and beverage department. And they are like, yeah, we, we, we're getting the best of the best people. Like, we drug test and everything. And I was like, oh. And you're not getting the best of the best people. You're getting the worst That's of the worst because they don't do drugs. That's your problem. Oh, That's yeah. straight up. It's that kind of shit. You get into management. Our buddy Aaron, who was the head chef at Park Cafe, and he was one of the first ones. He was like, dude, if I'm looking at two resumes and one says – culinary school and the other one says starving musician with no work experience 
He's like, I'm taking the start of a musician 10 out of 10 times. Every yeah. time. Yes. Every, Every single time. time. Because that guy's going to work his dick off because he has nothing yeah, else. Literally. And the culinary kid's going to come in all entitled with exactly. no work ethic and shit the bed. Do you probably. want this to cut Julian? Just yeah. fucking cut it. It's like, we're making burgers, dude. Yeah. Flip them. Yeah. <laughs> Flip them. <laughs> do you have faster. Do you have Drop t- all fries in a cup of soup. <laughs> no, it's like, do, you have, do, do we have Tillamook? No, we got Kraft Singles. Just put it on the burger. Yeah, right? <laughs> and if I hear one Kraft Single fucking word out of you, yeah. you're out of here. <laughs> That's what I'm got in my resume where it says culinary school. It's in like super fine print at the bottom. But yeah. then like, the <laughs> yeah, top like, it actually like says hide like, it plain sight. It says like Panini Pete's. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and it, like, which is actually a very highly reputable place back home, but they, no one else knows that. But like yeah. only the finest paninis. Yeah. Yeah. Um anyways, what the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Seasonal life. Seasonal life. So yeah, we would do it. That's another part that we were talking about. You were saying how mud season is depressing. It's a pro and a con that for most places you get this spring and the fall off. And you can say I get it off work or you can say I get fired, depending on your perspective. You know yeah, I mean? it depends yeah. on how you use it. You gotta plan accordingly because you don't have that steady paycheck coming in for a big chunk of the year. Yeah. And a lot yeah. of a lot of people like it because they can use it to travel. But at the same time, if you don't want to spend the money on travel, you're kinda left just uh holding your dick sitting around. Which honestly though, I kinda need that because I had a pretty rough winter and I had a pretty rough summer work wise, like my shit just got pushed in and whatnot. Yeah. So I I wanted the 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 break, but I realized it's I, a release. I, I realized I only I only needed like a one week release, you know. So fair enough. I yeah. usually release about once a week. Yeah. That's it. That's it. I mean, you get unclogged on pipes, huh? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I was about to say, honey, and that's <laughs> is not it like an hour event? I'm in a long distance relationship. I try to space it out. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's is like, that a, is, that a, is, that a, is that a long distance relationship joke? Yes, yeah, yeah, technically. <laughs> you must wake up with the hardest fucking morning boners. <laughs> <laughs> fucking two inches of fury, baby. <laughs> it's like the world's smallest crowbar. <laughs> am I going to put on pants or am I just going to wear this sweatshirt today? So for whatever reason, I just imagine you masturbate. The song "Kung Fu Fighting" comes on. Like, <laughs> what are you prying open with? It? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, it's my palm. That's what I thought. Um, get, yeah, getting back to mud season shit though. Like, it's funny because it, it sometimes it can be a pro and sometimes it can be a con. Yeah. So like, bro. Went to Thailand one spring. Con. Didn't do shit this fall. Right. Sat on my ass. Poor as hell. I've been eating mashed potatoes out of a bag for like I've also, weeks. I've had some great mud seasons where it's like, I'm not doing shit. Well, yeah, but you probably had money to help that. Right. Like, yeah, I, I did not prepare this time. If you mm-hmm. do it right, I mean, especially in the food and bev industry with bartenders and servers and oh, yeah. just management in general, I mean, when you, when you do one season of that, we know friends that don't do anything. For the winter, I, uh, my wife and I, uh, th- we just did that this past winter, and we mm-hmm. went to uh, Southeast Asia for uh, two and a half months. Yeah, and w- that's a plus to seasonal work. Sure. We can just kind of go. We're gonna go do that. Yeah, yeah. Or somebody else is just like, I have what are they called? Kids, Blech. gremlins. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Tumors with legs. Yeah, it's funny too when like. <laughs> I remember when I told <laughs> this is your fault. When I told my family, <laughs> I was like, "Hey, I'm uh I'm going to go to Thailand for a month." They were like, "What?" It's like, "Yeah, I'm I'm just going to go to Thailand for a month." They're like, "How?" Cuz well, I don't I'm gonna ha- buy a plane ticket. Well, no, I was we'll like, "Get on it." I was like, "I bought a plane ticket 2 months ago and I don't have a job for a month, so uh I'm going to go to Thailand." Right. Or like one time I uh, I went to Detroit. That's when I saw you on Halloween. Not quite as exotic as Thailand. No. <laughs> but <laughs> pretty close. But no. Well, no, cuz I got to go to Detroit <laughs> and Ann Arbor. Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, one shit. time. Who goes once? 
No, but like I got to travel to Detroit. I went to a couple other places. You made I, it yeah. tell me. I went on like a road. I, I went Detroit, on a Thailand. Airport. They both have straw huts and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hookers trying to chase you on scooters. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Stepped on an old landmine in Detroit, and then went to Vietnam. Did the same thing. <laughs> That that is actually crazy, a really dude. good point. They both didn't blow up. They were so old. <laughs> so old. That Jared brought up is that, um, you know, if you say to somebody like, "Oh yeah, I have this time. I have these couple months off in between work, so I'm gonna go to Thailand," and they think that's so crazy, just seasonal work in general. When you try to explain it to your friends and family, they go, "Man, I wish I could just move to Montana." It's like. <laughs> You, you can. can. Yeah. Like, I went on the internet. Actually, a girl made me do it. Right? <laughs> well, <laughs> you <know>. oh. dude, <laughs> my, or fuck, or Dylan is a good example of that. By the way, Dylan's my roommate and also best friend from high school. Uh, dude, Dylan, I literally called him last uh, fall, and I was just like, hey, I got a position open at my store. I'm like, you know, if you ever want it. If not, you should come out and visit. And I'd call him once a week. And then finally, I was just like, you know, you can just do this. He goes, oh, I don't know, man. I'm going to college. I was like, how many times have you gone to Fuck class? Fuck college. This-? No, I was like, how many times <laughs> have you gone to class this week? He goes, once. I was like, it's Friday. And you've gone once. I was like, drop that shit. Drop everything and right. just move out here. And right. he did. Yeah. And then what's the worst that happens? You can go back to the fucking townie yeah. that you yeah. came from. God you forbid. Yeah. It's like, at most, it's like four months of your life. Yeah. Like, just do it. And there's some people that, it. you know, they look at seasonal work like, oh, that was a fun thing I did back in college. Right. Because in between semesters, I work out and blah, blah, blah. We know a lot. There's a lot of famous celebrities yeah. that have done that and yep. whatnot. But at Steve the end Bo of the day, they're like. Steve did a season in Steamboat. Yeah, he still used to steal beer out of Safeway. What, John Steamboat? No, 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 Steamboat. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, John Steamboat owns the Safeway. Uh, sorry, that's right. Jonathan John- Steamboat owns all of Steamboat. John Steamboat's dad owns And he, he goes downtown with his monocle and his top hat, and he's like, I own this fucking place. Yeah, he always throws a brick through Mazzola's for some reason. Yeah, I'm he's best really friends with Mazzola's. It's the one place he doesn't own. He's really bitter. <laughs> Privatized. He doesn't like it. Do you know who I am? Best friends with Billy Kidd. Oh god! <laughs> they this is okay. So fun fact about Steamboat Springs: it has the most Olympians. Is it eighty nine or ninety now? It's a lot. Or it's ninety one, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. It's the most wild. Olympians of any town in the USA. Absolutely. And they decided to erect a statue of one of them, and he's a fucking bronze winner who's not even from this town. <laughs> <laughs> And he's a well, I shouldn't say he's a dick. I, can you imagine I, no, what he's they? A nice guy. Can you imagine I've never really met him, honestly. I just like seen him in passing. Can you nice imagine guy. what they would have done if he won gold? <laughs> that that statue would be 150 feet tall. No. Let's rename the Sheridan the kid. That's what I was gonna say. That's what I. <laughs> Welcome to Steamboat Billy Springs. Just a, fucking, just a fucking fountain made of cocaine with luscious truffle oils over fried fucking potatoes. It's not cocaine. It's just B12. It's just B12. Yeah. <laughs> It's a steamboat. This is not Aspen. Yeah, <laughs> we have real cocaine here. I actually, I saw Billy Kidd for the first time in my I entire saw him life. Once. Did he have a cowboy hat on? He did. He yeah. always does. He What's did. <laughs> and he was he, no, no, he was not. He was now. doing. He was doing. Uh, I guess an inspirational speech for the people of the BMW Corporation who came to test drive the X3. And what the did up- he say? You can almost win. <laughs> you could be the third best car in America. <laughs> you, if you try hard enough, you could work for Lexus. This car is really good, but two Norwegian dudes did a little better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you do get a statue and free drinks in a town the rest of your yeah, life. Right? <laughs> but you can say, fun, you know who the fuck I am? <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, you know what the highlight of that whole experience was? Was the hippie drummer from the uh, band that was playing background music said I made her the best vegan pasta she's ever had. So nice, yeah. Hell yeah! I got like <laughs> half a boner hearing that, and I was like, sweet. Half. Got your little vegan noodle up. I mean, yeah. If she That'd has make me go to <laughs> about a quarter. <laughs> uh, it's vegan. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. God, we got way off track. Yeah. What the fuck are we talking about again? We are talking about living in the mountains. In the mountains. Yeah. Let's make something. Really so, um. The seasonal life kind of talk. We've all like done kind of different aspects of it and things like that. I really enjoy it. I'm not gonna lie. And there's uh, the uh, there's not a lot of towns 
where you can really like have a life and do seasonal work, but this is one of them, and that's kind of the, one of the reasons I like this town a lot. Yeah. Uh, do you guys do you guys see yourself kind of doing this industry in the long term, or do you want to like go somewhere with a year round job? What I want to do is be a rep for a ski company, which oh, would yeah. which would still let me be a traveling worker. So technically, I would have a job that's year round, mm-hmm. but I would still travel all the time. Oh, which dude. is exactly what I yeah. want. Yeah, the reps in this town, and I, I, after college again, the Best Buy days, I used to have a lot of friends who were reps for like Sony, yeah, and things like that. Dude, being a rep is a solid ass job. A cush fucking job. And there's man. a like in this industry, especially, there's a lot of those kind of reps. Yes, I, I've thought about that myself. Like, I would, I would totally be like the food rep for like Cisco or like sure, you know, yeah, any of those like. Like after doing like the food and beverage industry for like a minute, totally like getting out and doing something like that. For sure. sure, but you could even aim more exotic than that. You can go. There's like like a liquor rep or a beer rep or a ski rep or a, a dildo snowboard rep. rep, a fucking dildo rep, dude. By the way, if anyone from Oakley's listening, name's Jared Morrill. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking. He's also Always. looking to be a dildo rep. Say, if anyone from Dildos Incorporated is listening, <laughs> Jared Morrill. I'll be at uh, SIA in February. I'll be at the uh, Dildo Expo in March. Either way, hit me up. With dildos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Oakley makes those. In or around his <laughs> face. <laughs> the shiniest dildo. They're dude. fucking getting there, dude. No, it's like a steampunk dildo. It's got like gears in it and shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Talk about gears of war. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was a reach. <laughs> Just like the Halo was... reference. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was oh, but, um, you find those dildos that can download music so they vibrate to the beat of the song. Is that a thing? If you yes. wake up in the morning, you can yeah, have kind is. of like a little Frank Sinatra or a little ABBA. Just I would, kind of chill. I got the at world nighttime on when you're drunk, it's like System of a Down. <laughs> I would, it would be one song all the time. It would be My Banana Pony pancakes. by... Oh. <laughs> Hit you one. <laughs> it, would, it would be Banana Pancakes by Jack Johnson. You're right. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Make your banana pancakes and stick the dildo up your butt. The fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I think we broke Jared. The fuck? That dildo would oh, break God. from boredom. What yeah. are you fucking talking about? <laughs> it, would like, it would just go limp. It would just go, go limp This dildo. is boring. I'm, gonna, I'm so high, I need to pass out. Yeah, it's like, what is this <laughs> floppy dildo? <clears throat> Aside from dildos, yes, I would love to have my career keep going in the seasonal life. I would love to keep doing some kind of seasonal work or traveling work sure. for the rest of my life. I mean, it's not. it's a good industry, man. Just guaranteed vacation time. Yeah. Every year is amazing. So clutch. Even yeah. like our bosses, the people who are like year round big wigs and shit. They still get a good chunk of time they off. They get a good yeah. chunk of time big off. T- yeah. And how many jobs can you say, like, oh, I have free rent during the summer and I get two months off a year? You're like, what the fuck? Like, what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I live at a place with forest fires and no Wi Fi sometimes, but. You right. Know. If you if you oh, make no. if you make fifteen dollars an hour and you pay no rent, it's the same as some of your friends making like thirty dollars an hour. Exactly, Big and time. they yeah. don't get to go hiking every day when they get off work. Or go no, they skiing get to sit in a day. fucking cubicle and stare right. at a plant. Pay for all kinds of shit every day. Whereas my <laughs> wife and I would call it Normalville. We can't go back, dude. The thought of staying in one place for eight months is really weird. Now, you guys live in Steamboat, but you guys have done the seasonal life leading up to this, and you just live in a seasonal place. Right. Yeah, but, but like, it's still like it's a draw that we have now. And I think that's something that, you know, humans actually are obligated to experience every day. We've always followed the herd. We 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 follow water sources. We move with the seasons, yeah. And it makes sense to be working seasonal work. Like I've done my time here. It's time to go to another place, yeah. and then I will come back to this. It's all profitable if you save. It it just it, it's definitely doable. Where most people just look at it, it's just like, okay, so what are you gonna do after this? Yeah. When right. are you going to be done with this? When is this phase going to be? You know, family members be like, oh, there's only so much hiking to do. It's like, yeah, Bullshit. it's about the hiking. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Yeah, right? <laughs> no, it's, it's, I mean, the hiking. No, is I should a go back part, to Central Florida with people like you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> when are you going to settle down and live in a shitty house in a neighborhood you hate and get yeah. a terrible Don't you job? want a mortgage? Yeah, right? 
What about you, Miles? I, do you think you're going to keep going with seasonal or like what? How do you feel about that? Because uh, I know you're kind of you're compared to us, you're a little newer to the game. I'm newer, but like I come from a place where we only had like one and a half seasons. Like you know, I had. Is it like Michigan where the seasons are winter and construction? Hey, <laughs> no, <laughs> oh. it's summer, which means construction. Like, yeah, we had we had summer and like. We had like summer, fall, and spring, but we had weird seasons. You know, like we in between, like uh, we had like a weird season in between, like some, I guess, like summer and winter, which and is it was called Roll Tide, snowbird season. Actually, is when all you uh. fuckers that like can't <laughs> deal with the snow come to like the you know coastal regions and like you don't spend any money, but you come into restaurants because you're not going to cook for yourselves. So. Like, I have a busy, like, there was a busy season at home, but I, I don't know. Like, I, I kind of, I'm kind of going to do this nest egg thing where I'm going to do this seasonal work for a little bit longer. And then, I don't know, I kind of want to do my traveling, but I, I, I don't want to stop. Like, I'm going to travel the U.S. and then maybe travel outside and then, I don't know, maybe, like, settle down open a restaurant. But. Well, that's the beauty of our line of work, man. You have so many options. At any moment, you could just go off every season, go to Washington, the next place, yeah. go to New Zealand. That's true. The next place, go do that, this. That, that's the only upside I'm seeing of it is the actual, like, being able to travel. Like Options. That, yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I, I guess that that's the one upside I look at it is, is the options of it. I, I do have them, you know, unlike some people. So. Yeah, and we, we know a lot of, like, we all did – five plus seasons at St. Mary just as one place but that I we've met a lot of people who do this seasonal gig and like every summer is a different park and every winter is a different resort mm -hmm. and back and forth and all kinds of things and they'll do they'll do 20 different places in 10 years you know so it's just kind of like to each their own depends on what you want to do yeah like I've only branched out so far I've really only worked four different places in six years Steamboat's the biggest city that Andy and I have lived in in Got six years, probably. Yeah, oh my yeah. God. Even going back to like Ann Arbor, which is like a smaller town. Southeast Michigan. Yeah. I was like, oh, there's traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Get me out of here. Same way I feel with Steamboat. I'm just like, where did all these fucking people come from? Because oh, we're, right. you know, we're at St. Mary. It's like a crossroads between, oh, you're heading up north of that Canada way. Yeah, you know? right. <laughs> that's, where that's, am I? That's actually the thing that infuriates me the most is the other day, me and a buddy, it was like Wednesday, and we're like, it is brisket day at Moe's Barbecue. And he's like, oh, but it's on the other side of town. I was like, that is... 3.5 miles away from here. Yeah, it's a seven-minute drive. It's not that far away. Like, literally, I have to, dr like, back in Alabama, I had to drive that just to get out of my neighborhood to get to any sort of civilization. All right. Gentlemen, anything else you want to add on uh, season life? Any uh, seasonal comments? That if there's anything to take from this, you should dive into it. Whatever age. Yes. My, if, the if worst anyone... thing that happens, you can say, I did this thing for one summer. If not, it's a, it's a career option, and it's just been wonderful sure I, love it. I would i would always say and i i could try to say this as much as i can is if you are a young person and you're debating college or not college or even if you're right after college i would say i would tell any kid i would tell my own children say don't go to college yeah go do a seasonal job that was, find out who you are first before you want to make that kind of commitment. yes yeah that was going to be my advice like yeah. I, I can guarantee you when i have kids i'm going to be like just Go work somewhere. Right. Don't and go you to college. Go, if you work at a ski resort in a national park for two years, then you can go to college if you want to. Or you yeah. can be like, no, I don't have to. And I'm, you know, like, I you have, just wave I it have something else I can do. www.coolworks.com. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Go to it. My go name's it. Jared Morrill, and I own a fuck up Malibu, dude. Dude, I own a Malibu and a Forerunner right now. What's oh, up, dude? Oh, what's up, dude? You have two cars? Dude, I'm a seasonal <laughs> worker, and I got two He's only like cars, 21 bro. years old or something? Whoa! Oh my 24. <laughs> Not some little bitch. <laughs> I was once upon a time. And so then I started You're not 30 doing like me. Work. Eat yogurt. Yeah. And then we brought you to St. Mary and you started banging chicks from the Czech Republic and you became so. a man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it takes, guys. <laughs> yes. Eastern European women, they make you men, believe me. Yeah. Oh, that's that's what we really got into that uh uh meeting people from all around the world. It's such oh, a huge yeah. 
proud. I can't believe we left that out. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, dude. I've all the, all them foreigner folks. They yeah. used to do that here, <laughs> and they quit doing it. And yeah. Steamboat used to have a ton of internationals, and then when the recession hit, they were like, wow, we're giving jobs to all these foreigners, and they we still, cut it. We still have a few. But yeah. say, there, the, the problem is, is that like, not. Not, like, we don't have enough people in this town to work these jobs. Also, we don't have enough, like, homes to house all these people. Right. Yeah. Like, it's a big catch-22. Yeah. Well, but, but that's so a good thing. If you go to a national park anywhere, about a third of the staff will be people from other countries. Japan, so guess, Thailand, Poland, Czech Republic, Morocco, Spain, Turkey. Yeah, the Germany. crazy, awesome Spaniards. Yeah. Romanians. La, the Romanians. I, I guess don't another see our the brothers. world through these <laughs> eyes. I just see them as people. No, they're Romanians. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Romanians. Def- I don't know what they are, but they're not people. They're not people. They are they're robots. They're, they're more machines than men. <laughs> Well, so, so and Romanian. <laughs> Another thing you can add to that is like the way I look at it, you can really culture the shit out of yourself really quick. Even in our, the comfort of our own country, you can culture the shit out of yourself by hanging out with a couple Romanians or Spaniards or oh, yeah. whatever. Like you learn so much so quick and you yeah. learn how yeah. to interact with people who don't actually speak your language you know, or vice versa. You like. You really get this weird connection with people with a huge language barrier, or like a huge cultural barrier. It's oh really yeah, cool. the cultural barriers are insane, and it's especially what's great is it sets you up to be more apt to travel because you got places to stay and yeah. people you know for the rest of your life. And you, you have friends all over the globe. Yeah, yeah and and immersing yourself in other countries and other cultures is so beneficial. The rest, yeah, the rest of your life that like will it, always it help to put shit in perspective. You yes. know what I mean? Once yeah. you travel to Southeast Asia, you're like. Is Donald Trump really that bad? Right? <laughs> You're like, like, is shit really that and bad he here in America? Bad, if he is that bad, he'll be gone in four years. Yeah, it's yeah whatever. Exactly. Where Thailand is like had a p- 14 political coups and rewritten their constitution yeah. that many t- of times as People well. People are like, things are so bad. Like, your it, shit day where you spilled your goddamn jamba juice on your chest before yeah. the job interview, compare that to a decent day in right thailand. when i was in thailand i literally couldn't walk on a street because the king was there they were oh, like yeah. no only thai people and we yeah were like okay we'll stay in the hospital yeah people are like getting on like twitter and being like i hope donald trump gets fucking murdered and if, <laughs> you would get <laughs> murdered in other countries if you're in thailand and you're like i think the emperor has smelly farts they take you out back and they shoot you in the head yeah it's yeah, like, Jesus. Like, it ain't a joke. Yeah, there's no Alec Baldwin in Southeast Asia. <laughs> <laughs> Eric <laughs> Baldwin. No, there's no Alec Baldwin doing uh, the best and everything. There's none yeah. of that. The and entire Baldwin family of Thailand was executed years decades ago. ago. Yeah, you go to other countries and you come back, you're like, you man, man, fucking free speech is pretty goddamn sweet. Yeah. yeah. You ain't kidding. Seriously. Yeah. That's why I keep it fucking protected, bro. Why we do <laughs> fucking podcast, dude. To be Please. honest, though, like working with J1s has only taught me like really only one thing, and it's that I am not ready to be a dad. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it. Like the J1s that you get don't really speak English that well. I'm barely and, a babysitter. Yeah, and like they don't really like they they think they know what they're doing, but they have no idea what they're doing. They don't know how to America. They don't know how to, like, work for they real. They don't know freedom isn't free. Yeah, you know, so you have to show Those them, you know. Like you know. <laughs> yeah. It, dude, it, then, like, the ones that get introduced <laughs> to cocaine are the worst. Or, or Andy, like, somebody introduces Taiwanese kids to pot. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Andy. <laughs> And they're all gonna get executed. They're cruising around. <laughs> <laughs> they're cruising around property, walking by Andy, just like Andy, what's up? Yeah, it turns out Perk got <laughs> murdered by the Thailand government because he bought a gram of pot, a whole gram. It was brown. <laughs> <laughs> you buy shit to weed or you die. All right, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my Taiwanese is not that great. <laughs> so Ronry. 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 I taught, uh, mm. the only thing I really taught all my J1s was sarcasm. And I don't think that really translated well back home. No, but it's the best thing to teach, the, honestly. The eye roll, probably. The eye roll's my favorite. The I, oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I, just, I love teaching foreign kids the word fuck and then hearing them use it wrong. Cause I think. I didn't, <laughs> no, because I didn't know you could use the word fuck wrong. It's, yeah, I mean, you can use it so many uh, ways. How I can know. you? I don't have a good example. Uh, actually, the best is when they try to, u- uh, like, when someone tries to use it as a verb, but they forget the ing. 
They're like, this is so fuck dumb. <laughs> <laughs> we had one of those. Like, yeah, you're close. We had one of those incidences in St. Mary in the EDR. Our friend uh, Mustafa. That's employee dining room. Yeah, the employee dining oh, room Mustafa. up in Glacier. Our friend Mustafa, uh, who's from Turkey, came up behind our friend Jay, right? And he put his hand on his shoulders and was really excited to see him around a bunch of people in the EDR. And he meant to say he's from Turkey and he actually speaks pretty good English, but he, he meant to say, yeah. I fucking love this guy. But he just grabs Jay by the shoulders and out loud, he's just like, I love fucking this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody fucking lost it in the EDR. And he had this dumb look on his face like, what's the matter? And he like told him, he's like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> like, Mustafa, penis and butt, bud. Yeah, penis and butt. It's like, I mean, if you're into it, that's fine. But good for you. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong. We with that. don't usually no. announce it's that. Just like, yeah. <laughs> uh, the best. My- do you do you remember when uh, our first season we went on that road trip to the west side with? Uh, uh, he's a Romanian, but like kind of like not actually a Romanian. Oh, fucking! Uh, he worked in the Curly Bear. Yes. Uh, no. Yeah. Do you look like Brian Felipe? Yeah, he worked. He was yes. always on ice cream. I know who you're talking about. But he said this thing. We were talking about something on the way back about some kind of like candy. And he's like, my favorite flavor is cockanoot. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, what? He's like, do you mean coconut? <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> we didn't say it was like a V or something. Vel or Vlad. I keep wanting to say Jan, something. but it's not Jan. No, it wasn't now because Handsome Jan was like. Handsome Jan was two years later. Yeah. <sighs> Anyways, yeah. the fun of meeting foreign people. Yes. All right, gentlemen. I think we should wrap this up. Do you have any uh, parting words? Uh, Don't say Roll Tide. I wasn't going to. <laughs> yes, you were. Was Don't not. be dumb. <laughs> Dump. Not. <laughs> Don't be dumb and go to college. Just if you're 18 or like 17 or some yeah. shit, just go work at a national park or a ski resort and figure your life out there because that will culture you so much better than being on a dumb college campus where they teach you bullshit. It'd be financial. Is that- go learn how to be a real person, not a fucking robot that a college teaches you to be. Do you I'll know who the yeah. uh, very first comedian ever was? Uh, Jesus. No, fucking uh, the writer. Moses. Mark Twain. Mark Twain. Mark Twain once said, don't let school get in the way of your education. Boom. Boom. Lock it up. Live by that shit. Seriously. Skadoosh. Also, follow our website. Come see us. We got a <laughs> show on uh, Friday the 29th at Schmiggity's. Doing open mics. Everything's at steamboatcomedy.com. Thank you guys for listening. Have a great night. Also, if you're super thirsty, drink Butcher Knife Amputator IPA. Our official sponsor, Butcher Knife. Give us money. Bye.